Hey everyone, Jordan, developer advocate at Superwall here, and today we're gonna build our own paywall. If you're brand new to our paywall editor, this is the video for you. I'm gonna walk you through the basics. I've got an example of what we're gonna build over here, and it's a simple paywall, but it's gonna teach you some fundamental aspects such as dynamic values, how to use the interface, and how to test some important states like a trial. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm logged into my Superwall account. I've clicked on the Paywalls tab over here on the left sidebar, and now I've got a display of all the paywalls I'm currently using. What we're gonna do is click New uh, Paywall, and we're gonna say From Scratch. And this is gonna give us a completely blank slate to start building out our paywall. To get started, you'll wanna kinda get a feel for how the user interface is laid out. In the middle, we've got our preview editor. So anything we make is gonna give us live edits right here. Uh, you can also go to landscape, portrait, and test on some common sizes as well. Over here on the left, we have our left sidebar, and these are gonna give you the main aspects of the paywall editor that you can toggle between. So you can see we could add some products, we could set up a theme, use variables, and probably the most important one is this layout pane, which is where we will add elements that we will use in our paywall. Now, if I did have an element and it was selected, you would see details about it over on this right-hand sidebar, and we'll get to that right away. But the first thing I like to do is just name it. So we'll say my first paywall, and that's what we'll call this one. And there we go. The best place to start with any paywall though is products. We have some predefined components that will try and pull in some of the products that you've made and use them in the, uh, in the user interface, such as buttons or lists, things like that. So starting with products is a great idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose one here. Let's go with, uh, got a lot of test ones. I'll say I've got an annual. That'll be my primary one. And then I've also got a expensive annual. That'll be my other one. So we can do some price anchoring. Okay. So I've got my products. We kind of have a feel for what the user interface looks like. Let's get started with adding some components next. So the first place I like to start with any paywall is with a stack. Now stacks are your fundamental building blocks of any paywall that you make. They are container views that you're gonna add other components into. Under the hood, it just uses CSS Flexbox. So if you know that, you can jump right in. If not, no worries. Just think of it like a container view. Um, for example, in Swift UI, it could be analogous to your H stacks, your V stacks, your Z stacks, things of that nature. But I will come over here and say add element. Now, what we're gonna see is our element library here. And we have common fundamental building blocks at the top. And in the middle is the snippet library. These are pre-made aggregated components that we offer you from Superwall that are very common across several paywalls. For example, you can get a comparison table, uh, the trial timeline, um, some product selectors, carousels, things like that. And you can even make your own snippets to reuse, which I have a few of those down here. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and choose simple navbar. Now, what that does is adds a H stack with a close button to it. And if we select it, which it already is here because it's our only component, you can see it in the uh, view hierarchy. And on the right, now we have all of these properties that we can tweak about it. And you can even see the CSS that's being applied down here at the bottom. So if I expand that, you can see I have yet another stack in here. And we have an option to add a left button, a center title, and the right button is already made for us. And that is an icon. We can also see that that icon has a tap behavior and it's gonna close the paywall, right? So already we can see we're using several stacks within other stacks to make this nav bar. And that's gonna be a common theme as you build your paywalls. So we've got our first component. We've got a way to close the paywall. Let's go ahead and use some more components to build out the rest of it next. Okay, so let's build the rest of this paywall. Again, I'll start with the stack. This is gonna be my main uh, container that I use to build out the rest of the paywall. I like to go ahead and rename it too. So I'll call that content stack. You can think of this layout panel as uh, the same as you would as a layers panel in something like Figma or Sketch. So it pays to kind of rename things to keep them organized. I'm gonna say horizontally, I want things centered. Now keep in mind, our toolbar slash navbar up here is 110 pixels in the height. So what I'm gonna do is in this content stack, I'm gonna add some margin to it so it flows right below. Looks great. Okay, from here, again, let's look at the paywall we're trying to build and I'll put up a preview of it right over here. We've got this icon, text, the segment picker, and then some bolded lists along with the standard buy button and your paywall links like privacy policy, terms and conditions, things like that. 
So I just go top to bottom when I'm building these out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pr uh, press element and icon. And there we go, we've got our first thing here. And I'll put that in the stack and you can see that it's already centered for me. We have a lot of icons built in over 1400. So I'll go ahead and search for star. There it is. And that looks good. Now, remember, this is a web view, so you can use all the capabilities of CSS. So to size this, I'm going to go with 84 by 84, but you could also say you want to go a percentage. Um, you could do it based off of uh, um, REMs, viewport width height, whatever you want. In my case, I'm going to stick with pixels. And there's our icon. But in our design, it's purple. So where is that purple coming from? Well, that is a handy feature called theme. And you can think of this like a brand kit. You can use these colors all over your paywall so you don't have to keep referencing the same um, color over and over, copying, pasting it. So we can see we have this primary color here. So what I'm gonna do is select my icon and I will go up to the icons layer, choose dynamic and primary, and that will apply that purple to it. Great. Let's keep going down the row. We got some text next. I will add that in there. And we'll go ahead and start by putting the right copy in. Get started for free. Looks good. Um, we'll give it some weight, make it a little bit punchier. Maybe say 36 on the font. Actually, let's bring it down. 32 looks better. And then I will add some vertical padding. Okay, looking good. And again, our next component is a segment picker. So I'll go over here, press plus, and choose the segmented picker. There we go. Now, the reason why this is so handy is because it's gonna pull from those products that we set up in the first part of this video. And that's why it's a great place to start with your products first. And we can see that it's already got tap behaviors to select the primary product and the secondary one. Now, the reason why it's saying yearly in the text is because we're using our liquid templating engine and it's saying use the period of whatever the primary product is. So we could say price and there's $9.99. I think the other one is $24.99 and there you go. But since we're selling two annual products instead, I think I'm going to put standard and pro and this would represent like the same annual plan, but one has some more features, right? A standard and a pro plan. Perfect. Okay, let's keep moving down the list. Next, we've got this bulleted list. So I'll go to our component library again, choose bullets, and there we go. We will fix the copy later. But right here is a common scenario, right? We've added this bulleted list, but you can see there's no padding on either side. And at this point, you can either apply padding at just a component level. So we could certainly come in here on the stack and add that right here. Um, but what I like to do is do it at the container level. To me, that makes things a little bit more uniform, right? Uh, keeps things nice and organized. So on the margins, I'm gonna say 16 on the left, 16 on the right, and that kind of gives me the look that I want. Now at the component level of the bullets themselves, let's go ahead and add some top padding, and I will say 16. There we go. So we're looking good here. The thing that we have left is that button and those restore uh, links. So that button in the design is down at the very bottom of the screen. So it acts as sort of a fixed footer. Luckily, we've got something just for that in our snippet library. So I will add that and there we go. Now out of the box, you're gonna see that we've got this black text and I don't think it looks very great on this purple background, but it's a good opportunity to talk about dynamic values. Dynamic values are what allow you to change things based on certain conditions, right? So you can change text based on the selected product. You could change what uh, text reads based on the time of day, hide and show things, all sorts of stuff. Or you could just reference your um, theme library too. Now you'll know something is using a dynamic value because you'll see this purple background behind it. So that is saying, hey, this typography color is coming from a dynamic value. So we can see what it is when we click on it and we'll see that it's text. Um, but for our case, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear that and say that we just want this to be white. And we will change the text to try for free. Now snippets are fully customizable. In our design, we have the price and period below that try for free button. So let's add another text component and get that taken care of. Um, again, by default, that's using the same color. So we'll make this white. Um, change the size to 12 and maybe the font weight to medium. 
Now, our liquid templating engine is gonna make this very easy. So if we uh, do add variable and uh, go to products selected, we could say, give us the price of the selected product. Add a dash in there and do the same thing for the period. Oops, and I see that says primary. Let me change that to selected. Okay. Now up here, you'll see that those tap actions are selecting a product. So if I've got this wired up, anytime I choose it, the bottom updates. You can see it says $24.99, standard is $9.99. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, the last little bit I think that we needed in our design were those links. So I'm gonna choose our fixed footer and go down here to, I believe we have a footer links, there they are, and add that in. Now you can manually go through here and you can change um, the place that these uh, are gonna go to. So open URL, the terms goes to Apple's uh, boilerplate. You can add in the privacy and we've got the restore button already hooked up for you too. So at this point, our paywall is looking good. I think the design is done, but we need to do a, a little bit more. That try for free button should only apply if there's a free trial. So let's see how we hook that up next using dynamic values. So let's say someone opens up this paywall and they don't have a trial available. Try for free is not gonna make a lot of sense, right? And we can use dynamic values to update that text accordingly. So I'll click on the cog and choose dynamic and we're just gonna add a rule. This works just like programming. It's just control flow statements. If this, do that, else do this. And you can add rules and groups and get as advanced or as simple as you want. So we have this special variable called has introductory offer. And if a trial is available, it's gonna be true. So we'll say if it's true, we'll stick with try for free. But if it's not true, we'll just go with continue. And that's gonna automatically update that text based on whether or not that's true. Now, if you wanna test out your paywall for both states, you can just go over here and override that in the variables. Here's that same one has introductory offer and I can just pop it off and on. And you can see that the text down here will update based on whether or not that's true. But we can extend this idea even further, right? So standard versus pro, how would we show the value proposition between those two things? Well, we could go through each one of these and use dynamic values to update what it's showing based on the plan we have selected. Because again, this is selecting the primary product, this one is selecting the secondary. So if we know that, we could go through each of these and change them to use dynamic values. I'll just do the top one as an example. I'll say dynamic. And our rule is if the selected product index is zero, which is, I believe, our standard plan, we'll just say, um, try our base set of features. Otherwise, if we have the more expensive one, our most advanced features, and we'll save that. So that is the dynamic value. That's gonna update now based on whether or not the standard or pro is selected. So if we choose pro, you'll see it automatically updates. So you can kind of get an idea of how you could go through one by one and have things update based on the product that's selected. So dynamic values can save you tons of time by making sure your paywall adapts to the situation. Now, one quick reminder before we test this out. Under the hood, Superwall is rendering your paywalls as web views. And that means you can take advantage of all the capabilities of CSS and your components. So if we wanted to add a gradient to this, uh, we could just select it and add a few CSS properties to do that. I'll put a linear gradient and a background clip of text, and I'll need to pipe down the color. And there you go. So remember, if you need a certain design and our component properties aren't kind of getting you what you need, no problem to dip down into CSS. Okay, let's test this out, see if it's working. One quick note on your products. If this app or your products aren't live on the App Store yet, Use a store kit configuration file so you can easily test and view these products and go through the purchasing flow. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out here. And in one of my test campaigns, uh, which I have right here called primary, I've associated this paywall to it. You can see right here, it's going to 100% of users. There's the new one we made. And if you need to add this yourself, you can just go to the add paywall button and choose the one that you need. So with all that in place, this should work. As soon as I hit one of those uh, placements in the primary campaign, we should see it. So I'll run the app, do a pro action, and there's our paywall. We can go through, go through the whole purchasing flow and test everything out. I hope you've enjoyed this look at our paywall builder. 
as you can see, it's easy to get started. We have one of the most powerful what you see is what you get editors on the market. Remember, to recap, add your products to your paywall and then start with some of our snippets or components and customize things from there. Your stacks are your containers, so you'll want to begin with them and build things up as you go. And remember, you don't have to start from scratch. Take a look at our template library. You can pull those in and just like you customize snippets, you can customize those templates to fit your brand or aesthetic very easily. These are easily testable as well. We have documentation I'll link in the description so you can test them on your phone. And that's it. We hope to see you over here at Superwall. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'll see you next time.